Hello everyone, and welcome to a new series called Ticket Tutorials, where I will be showing you how to make different kinds of ticket components and machines that, that might make your ticket uh, everyday life easier. And in this episode, I'll show you how to get lava from the nether and up to the overworld. Now, this is something that's, of course, not possible in um, the regular Minecraft, uh, in, unless you kind of have to pick it up with buckets and then go back and forth, which is very time-staking and consuming. And um, we want to kind of make that process automatic. So uh, you might think, well, what's the point of getting lava from the nether? Well, um, in the overworld, you kind of have to... There's not... They have some pretty huge lava lakes up here, but they're not really as big as the ones in the nether. And you kind of have to always move your pump around if you want more lava for your, for example, your geothermal facilities, which is what I'm going to be concentrating on, or your ge geothermal generators. And um, you kind of have to go back and forth. And in the in nether, I, you can trust me that you'll have to spend a lot a lot of time and get a lot of lava before you're able to exhaust like one one place where you can place your pumps. So uh, the, the first thing that you'll need to know about this is that this only works on the server. And the reason for that is that I'm not really sure, <laughs> to be honest. But um, I, I just know that it, it only works on the server, even if you're playing Ticket or Technic Packs. Uh, so if you're play, playing Ticket or Technic Pack um, or Ticket Solo, then it won't work. But if you're playing Technic uh, or Ticket on a server, like I'm doing now, then it will work. So uh, that's all you need to, need to know, really. And uh, I can just show you the items you need to get started. So you will be needing uh, two Ender Chests, four filters from Red Power, uh, two pumps from Buildcraft. Two deployers from Red Power, uh, eight redstone engines, uh, two timers, uh, and just a bunch of red alloy wire, really. You'll need some cobblestone waterproof pipe, some wooden waterproof pipe, some pneumatic tubes, some tanks, some levers, uh, and a bunch of buckets. And at least some of them, two of them have to be lava buckets, just so that you're clear on that. And then you'll just need uh, some sort of building material. I've, ch I've chosen stone here. And of course, of course, you'll be needing access to the nether, so I can just show you how to do this right now, and we can get started. So, the first thing you want to do is basically choose an ideal location, and I've kind of chosen this place, it has a really big lava lake around it, and it's fairly close to my portal, which is all the way up there. Um, I, bet, I bet you can see it, but it's actually just right there. And uh, you'll have to make a platform, uh, it can look like this, it can look, it can be like one... Uh, one level higher, or it doesn't really matter that much, but what's, what's important is just that you got this fairly big platform that you can operate from. Now, we will begin by placing down our pump, which will pump lava from here, obviously. So you can just do this uh, like you would normally do. I'm just gonna raise this one, or this thing by one. But uh, it's fairly simple, you just put it like this, and then you place your pump, and you... I'm just gonna go ahead and give myself a pickaxe. Go, and you just take away this stuff, and then you can place your redstone engines. I'm just gonna have to take away this dark stuff around the search. There we go. And you place your four redstone engines like this, and you take a couple of levers, place them like this. And then I just have to take some cobblestone, waterproof pipe, and drag it across here and into your tanks, and you'll just have to put up one single tank, but you can make it pretty high so that you got like a good, nice, steady supply of lava. So I'll place this tank about here is good, and I'll just make it, you know, fairly tall. It doesn't have to be that much bigger. Um, I guess this is in pretty okay size. So next, you'll have to, or you can take your ender chest and you can place it somewhere, say right here. It's a good location. Or actually, we'll move it one back. Um, and another thing that's kind of important to know with this setup is that it's kind of flexible, so you can, uh, you can kind of move it around how you, how, however you want, as long as you get it to working. So, let's just make sort of like a way to go up here. And we can basically start this up, so because they need some time before they really get hot and pump a lot, so we can just get them started and get some lava into this thing. Next, you can take your deployer and your filter. Now, what a deployer does is uh, it's a machine from Red Power, and what it does is that it, it, it essentially acts as a right click uh, a player how a player would right click so we can actually fill buckets from uh, tanks and this is very useful for us of course uh, and then you can just place your filter behind here and the filter kind of extracts things from this because this, this thing just fills it up and then this thing can drag uh, all the lava buckets out from the, the deployer and I'll be using pneumatic tubes. You can use buildcraft tubes for doing this but I'm just using this one of these because I think they, they are a lot you know faster naturally and they just work a lot better. And you take these and you drag them around and into the ender chest. Really simple. Um, 
which means that now this thing will be essentially take buckets and uh, fill them with lava and then this thing will pull the buckets out at the, or actually one thing you have to do is you have to fill uh, put one lava bucket in the filter because then this thing will know that okay I have to pull lava buckets out from this thing and uh, not empty buckets for example so it'll, it'll just take the buckets pull them over and into this chest and then, then this is of course an ender chest and the way this works is that it actually has uh, sort of like a common inventory so that over all the dimensions I can basically put something in here and it will show up in this chest as well and I can just destroy all the chests and the thing will kind of just still be there which is kind of weird but that's how it works anyways and it's very nice uh, because if we, did, if we didn't have these then this thing wouldn't work I think so next you will place another filter right here and take some more pneumatic tubes and pull them away and into the deployer and we'll just grab this one and then you can fill this filter up with the empty buckets with an empty bucket so there you go that's fairly simple uh, all that's actually needed now in the nether to complete this machine is that you need some power uh, some red power or redstone power to these uh, different machines so you can just shift uh, if you hit shift and right click you want to access them you will just kind of place stuff on them so you can just place some redstone right here and then onto this one and if we say place a and this is kind of where you know you can get more space if you want to but this works just fine and then you can get a lever and now I actually started pumping right now so that's just because there was one empty bucket in this thing and then you can see it carries the lava bucket but that's not a problem so we'll just turn this off and then we will put this to one second I think it's good enough and yeah that works fine and we'll just take this bucket and we will uh, essentially just empty out the lava I think is best now what you do now is that now the setup is essentially finished in the nether. It's very simple, I think, um, and uh, it's uh, also fairly cheap, you know, compared to having to move all the lava around. It's actually pretty pretty cheap. So what you can do now is just go to your uh, deployer and right click it and fill it up with buckets. And you only need about five or six um, because, and I'll tell you later why you don't really need more than that. But uh, this is essentially how you can get the stuff to work. So you don't really need anything more than this. This is simple enough and it works beautifully. So what you'll do now is just check that everything is working. You got the lava buckets and the pump is working and pumping lava into this thing. Now you'll have to go back to the overworld and I guess I'll see you when we get back up. Alright guys, so we're back in the overworld and uh, we can just continue on from here. And this is the part where we make kind of the system that will extract lava buckets and put them into tanks. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the creative mode, just place a little sand block in there, and we can get started. So, I still, there we go. So now, you will get, uh, you should take your ender chest, which is not here anymore. Um, let me just go ahead and give myself one. I may have destroyed the one uh, that I had in survival or in uh, creative mode, but not a problem. And another filter as well. There we go. And, um... And I actually forgot one thing, um, but I'm going to get back to that when I get to the end. So you can just place your ender chest right here, and then you can place a filter like this. And you can place a lava bucket in the filter, because then this thing will know that, okay, I'll take the, lava, the full lava buckets from the chest and not the empty ones, because that's we kind of want the lava buckets to go in a cycle so that we can reuse the same lava buckets all over again. And you get some pneumatic tubing right here. And then this is where, this is where it gets pretty, pretty, pretty um, cool. And very compact, compact, I think. So you can place your deployer like this. And what uh, you might think that, okay, the, the deployer, because it can kind of take lava from buckets or take lava from tanks, it should be able to place lava into tanks as well. But that's actually not how it works for some reason. Um, I don't really know why, but uh, we kind of have to find a way to work around that. And that's what we need the under pump for. So the deployer can put lava actually inside, uh, or it can just place lava from buckets uh, just onto blocks. So you can just kind of build this wall around this thing. And then I like to build it up a couple of levels uh, so that we can place the pump up here. And uh, you place the pump, and then you take the engines again for redstone engines, which is more than enough to kind of run the pump uh, at a high efficiency. Place your levers, and then here you will place another filter facing this way. And you kind of have to be staying, standing on the ground. You can use a wrench to move these, but I prefer just kind of doing it like this. Um, and then you put, put an empty bucket inside this one. 
So then when this, you know, uh, same as in the uh, in the underworld, this will pull lava buckets from this thing. This thing will deploy the lava buckets. Uh, the deployer will uh, put the lava from the lava buckets down, and this filter will drag the empty lava buckets out and back into the ender chest. So very simple system, very easy to kind of uh, put up, and uh, it's working greatly. So now, the very kind of final steps is just basically taking a pipe like this, and putting it into your uh, storage system, uh, which can be uh, whatever way you want it to be, really, really. Um, but this is just basically how it works. And then, of course, from here you can just take the lava, pump it out, put it into whatever you'd like, um, and you can get along from there. So there are two things you actually need, or one more thing that you need that I kind of forgot about. Number one is that you don't really need the wooden waterproof pipes. Uh, That's only if you want to kind of keep on uh, pumping the lava. But the one thing that you do need is that you need two world anchors. And the world anchors, if you don't know, they kind of keep the a chunk loaded. I think it's three by three chunks loaded. Um, but anyways, you kind of just have to place one of these things uh, just right by your uh, system in the overworld and then one in the nether as well. And uh, then you kind of have to just wire all this up like we did last time. And we can just go down like this, place this, and place a lever. And then you put it down Let's see, to one second. That's a lot. There we go. Turn it off, and everything should be powered. And everything should be working. Um, and keep in mind that this system, uh, I'm running the newest ticket version, which I think, I think it's 3.1.2. And uh, in this version, it is working. Um, but there might be some bugs that I'm going to get back to later, I think, if, it's hap if, it, ha if it happens to me. So now, what I'll do is that I'll, I'll just turn this thing on so that it can stay ticking. I'll just check all the filters. Does it have a lava bucket? Yes. Does this, does this one have a empty bucket? Yes. And I'll just go back into the nether and I can get back to you guys when I get to my system. So here we are by the system. And a problem that you can see now is that you may not have noticed that this thing, this thing hasn't really filled up much from when we were last here. And this is what happens when you don't have the world anchor. So I kind of need the world anchor to be here so I can just take away this block, for example, place it right here. Or there, or there, it doesn't really matter, as long as it kind of covers an area around. Um, and then I was just going to check, this one has a filter correct, this one has a filter correct, and now it's actually just a matter of putting this, or, you know, turning this thing on, and see if, seeing if it's going to work. So let's just turn this thing on, and as you can see the lava buckets are being carried out here, and then if it's working then we should be getting empty buckets coming out of this thing after a little while. And I actually forgot to put on the pump in the overworld, so I'm going to go ahead and have to do that, but we can still see of course that the, the buckets are coming back and it's really efficient and it's you know they it's almost instantly actually um, because of the fast uh, these pneumatic tubes are kind of naturally fast and then this thing will just keep on going like this but I'm just gonna turn it off for a little while because I need this lava to kind of fill up and the engines kind of need to pump a lot more um, and I guess I suppose I can just wait until this tank is pretty full and then I'll get back, get back to you and we can see the system and it's fully operational state and then also go and uh, you know, kind of turn on the, the pump in the overworld. So I guess I'll see you guys then. All right, guys. So now the pump in the overworld, the kind of I put it on and it's working, I think. And uh, I've got a bunch of lava in this pipe, and I'm just gonna get this thing started, and we're just gonna have to see how it's gonna work out. So let's turn this on, and the buckets will come out of this part, and they will be transported out. And now I will just go back into the overworld yet again. This time I can just fly there. It's not very far, um, and I can show you how it's kind of working in the overworld. So um, the system is, you know, it's very efficient compared to kind of like I said, going around in the, in the underworld because this thing, this thing will just, will just pump forever because there's so much lava. It's literally like 10 or 11 deep, uh, blocks deep at some places, and that's a, you know a very very large area. I can show you how it's working in my um, other in my kind of uh, solo world, uh, or it's a, it's like a solo server, I guess. So as you can see here. Um, the buckets come through here, and uh, or they will come through here in a little while. There we go. And then this thing will deploy them. The lava right here. Let's just fill this up with a tank so that you can see. And then the pump will pump it up, and it will put it into the tank. And of course, this thing will get a lot faster once the engines have kind of warmed up. Uh, right now, they're kind of slow. And uh, the system is working beautifully, and you don't really need to maintain it. I think you don't you don't have to really spend any time uh, working on it usually. Um, because it's a very, very, you know, easy uh, and fast system to use, and it's not very, you know, you know, it's, it's not terribly hard to kind of put up and get working. 
And as long as you have, you know, it's kind of expensive. The most expensive thing I think is probably the world anchors. So, um, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, uh, right, I kind of my, my server kind of disconnected, disconnected me English for a while, but uh, yeah, like I said, um, this thing is very efficient, and um, a problem that you might be having that I had. Uh, not this time, but I had it uh, another time, was that uh, the pump was kind of, uh, when I was in the overworld, the pump was working in the underworld, um, but uh, it kind of didn't seem to pump anything into the uh, into the tank, it just kind of kept all the lava inside the pump, and then when I would get down there, it would kind of just take all the lava out at once, and it would be like a, this entire um, kind of pipe would just be filled with lava all the way. So, what I did to resolve that problem was that I kind of just re-logged the server, restarted the server, and then that, that seemed to fix the problem. So if you have that problem, you can try doing that, and... Um, that should fix your problem, I think. Um, other than that, there might be, you know, some bugs, but I've done this quite a few times now, and this worked every single time for me, so it shouldn't be too hard for you to do. And uh, I guess that's been it. So one thing I can do as a small bonus that is that I can show you how I'm, you know, kind of utilizing this in my single player world or in my other Tekkit server, where I'm kind of this is kind of like just like a test server uh, that I'm doing to test if this working. But this thing is, you know, it's fairly efficient. You can just you can add more of these systems if you want to get more lava. But this is more than enough, I think, uh, to run a decently large uh, energy system of uh, geothermal generators. But uh, yeah, so uh, I guess I will go into my single player world, and I'll see you then. All right, so here I am in my single player world, and as you can see, I have kind of my base is inside this volcano. I've, I've kind of been working on it for a little while, and I haven't been playing too long. But uh, anyways, uh, let's go and see how this is working. So I have my uh, Ender or my Nether portal. That goes to my platform. I'm not going to show you how the platform looks because it's essentially just the same as in the other world. But as you can see here, I have put up so many tanks because I'm getting so much lava from this thing, and it's just not enough to cope with. You know, uh, I don't have, didn't have enough tanks, so I just kind of have to put up a lot of these tanks. So many of them are filled to the brim, and I'm not, because I'm not really using that much electricity right now, so I have a lot of lava, and the system is working beautifully. And uh, it, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I, I wish someone could tell me if these things are going to explode. I'm not sure. Uh, they shouldn't do it but um I heard that they can if they kind of power each other but they're not doing that right now so I think this is just gonna stay fine like this but yeah the system is looking almost identical I have the world like right here and then you know the power and stuff so um I can go down to the nether as well uh, or not the nether I'm gonna actually go inside here and show you how it's looking inside because what I did is that I put a teleport pipe up to those two tanks uh, some of them and then I pumped the lava into my base right here and you can, of course, just use pipes instead of no teleport pipes, but I just find them to be easier to use. And then right here, this is where I have my geothermal facility. I have some tanks here that go f quite far up, and then they also have um, some resonant engines. And then you have uh, a bunch of this stuff going under the floor. And if I just tear up the floor a little bit, little bit you can see how this thing is working. Um, it's essentially just... You got um, all these machines are getting. I mean, this this you can have the tank here, and then all these machines are getting the exact same amount of um, of lava, which is great. And then you have them coupled up with uh, a bunch of wire, and that goes you know behind the walls. And then all this wiring goes into this uh, MFS or MFE. And as you can see, just these things being on produce quite a lot of power. And these are actually empty right now because I've turned off uh, the lava flow. And um, I'm gonna put up some more once I get uh, around to it, but uh, that's basically how the system looks. It looks very good, it's very efficient, not, not to say um, uh, at least. I'm gonna have to put up another MFE or make an MFSU if I'm gonna have to be able to store all the power. And then of course here I just have a bunch of mass raiders and electric furnaces and stuff. So that's just one way to kind of utilize um, how you use your power, but I find that to be a very efficient and kind of uh, good looking solution. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you'd like more like this, uh, I would appreciate if you could like the episode or leave, uh, leave a comment below telling me what you think. Uh, you know, am I doing something right? Am I doing something wrong? I'd like to hear that. Um, and I do know that I'm speaking fairly quickly. That's just kind of how I am. And I guess I could uh, get used to um, speaking more, uh, you know, slowly. But uh, that's going to have to happen again or at least in, an, in a later episode. So, I'm going to make more episodes like this uh, showing off different things that I've made and then that I looked on, looked at and made um, and I didn't come up with this uh, thing by myself I did look at other videos uh, but I can't really remember which video it was I think it was quite a few that showed this exact same thing so um, yeah again the system is very efficient I find it to be very nice uh, a very nice solution instead of having to go and you know kind of replace the pipe if you watch that ticket series it's kind of what, what we have to do all the time 
but uh, in our series win now we also have the system going so uh, it's very nice and fairly cheap and very efficient so um thank you guys for watching and i will see you next time